Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little update for you on marking out the uh, pillar, the arms, the you know, tapping arms and drill head arms for the universal pillar tool. I just finished, well let's see, a little recap kind of reality check for the shop time and so forth. The milling of the, of the arms, it was about an hour and a half, two hours, just carefully getting them down to size and then I've spent a very pleasant hour probably hour and a half two hours out here marking them out and I can't stress this enough in you know the, the resources that I mentioned at the beginning of the series if if you're gonna do this go back and look at those so there's some just some great stuff in there so I was using a lot of the the techniques and so forth that you see um, let me flip the camera around and I can do some close-ups and, and describe to you a little bit better how things um, how things worked in reality. So here we go. All right, so here we have the, the this is one of the tapping arms. You see I wrote in chalk number one next to it. I, I took measurements on all of these like I mentioned before and You'll notice the first thing that you need to consider is that the part that's going to be bored for the five, the uh, seven eighths the pillar is thicker, and so when you put it in a vise or anything else like that, this side is narrower. It's some anywhere between fifty and a hundred thousandths on these castings. So I carefully noted that, and what I did was I used when I was milling these to size, I put a I put a shim in the side in the Kurt vise on the the Bridgeport mill so that the um the the jaws of the vise would press evenly and the 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 pillar arm could not move around also i used half that thickness i'll show you the shim in a minute um but it's pretty clever also when i was marking these out i used a feeler gauge here and i would use half the half the distance and i would you, I'd use this um, large square, machinist square here, put it alongside, and I would use the feeler gauge and use that to fill the space and then get a square here. I hope that makes sense. But that way your your arm is fairly perpendicular. I don't know if a few thousandths would make a lot of difference in the marking out, but if you have the time to set it up right, why not go ahead and you know do it right? Um, so this is my the little contraption. I don't have a bigger angle, angle plate, so I used this one that I have, and I, I clamped a piece of cold rolled steel bar to it and a ruler, and then I clamped the, the piece to it, and I squared it up vertically, and then I would... I had already marked the, uh, the center part here, and it was pretty obvious how to do that, and so I used that as my zero, I set my vernier scale. This is the first time I've ever used this. I've been into metalworking for 10 years. I've never actually, that I can recall, actually used this uh, vernier scribing block. But it worked great. And so that would be my zero. And then I had laid out, let's see if you know, for the tap arm. Okay, from the small end, I would go up 531 thousandths. That's the offset for the, the collet or the um, cotter that that's where the brass cotter will go and then I went up to five inches and 451 thousandths that's for the next cotter and then six inches which is the the distance for the arms itself the reason I stopped right here to take this video is when I first I've, I've done this one twice and when I first did it I marked I had used this and a ruler, the Sterrett ruler, to mark the approximate center of this piece of the casting. And then I did all my layout, did the whole thing. And when I, when I was done, this, the center was about an eighth of an inch closer. You know, it, it would have looked off center, is what I'm trying to say. So I was like, hmm, I could move that here because this part is going to get bored uh, 75 thousandths. So, and when I did it, it, it came out, it, I think it's going to look a lot better. So that's why you see, if you see some odd pip marks and things on here, that's where I had 
finished all the way and then I then I realized that and I'm like nah I think I'm gonna redo that so that's the beauty of taking your time with the layout and thinking about it how it's all gonna be um, so that one is now completely laid out and getting uh, the, the next thing that I'll do uh, I'm set up I've got the uh, tapping head set up to drill through a quarter inch on both of these and one of them I will um, drill down and then use an end mill to make a flat bottom hole for half inch for the um, brass cotter and then I'll, I'll also have to drill a sixteenth inch hole I'll have to mill a flat center drill and drill a sixteenth inch hole here that will go into the center of the cotter and I've, I've marked those out too on the shoulder of the casting I don't know if you can see that or not but when I was doing the marking for the center of the cotter I, I dragged the scribing line over to on the shoulder so it, it's supposed to be in 156 thousandths from the edge um, but that's that's where the the pin will be the 1 16th inch drill rod so that's the basic layout and as you can see I've, I've made notes about all the machining steps here and I did the same thing for the tap head so let me show you some of the things about the tap head and I'll talk a little bit more about the casting if you'll bear with me while I move the the video over here there's the pillar I did get a um, I was gonna make one but then I found the local tractor supply sells the a three quarter sixteenths inch nut and I've got it bolted on down here underneath the table so um, it was like a dollar sixty and uh, that was well worth it to me and I've got the pillar in there clamped in just with a um, ordinary screw right machine screw right now so that's the that's the base there's the caboose project let's walk over here Hardened and traveling. And right here I've got the, this is the drilling head. I've got that set up. And if you, as you can see, I've center punched the marks where the collet, the cotters will go. So I'll drill both of those a, a quarter inch through, countersink it and drill through. And you can also see I've marked them um, that which side gets the quarter inch only hole, which will get the half inch. And um, I'm gonna, I plan to do that throughout. Here is the, oh, let me talk more about shim. So this thing is, you know, this one also is narrower on this end. So I've got a brass shim underneath there to hold it level. You can see it's fairly level. You can see the center dots for the, the center line here. And I've got it securely fastened in. It won't be a big deal if that um, drill hole is not perfectly perpendicular. I mean, it's a casting, so it'll be it's awfully close right now also this is the shim I made up and it's kind of hard to see it now but I actually did this in three layers I started out with the thinnest shim that I needed and then I just kept adding shims and a piece of a wrap of tape here and that's when I would uh, the shim that I would add when I had these pieces in the in the mill vise this way and I would add the shim onto the side of it so to make up for the the taper of the arm so let me show you exactly what i'm talking about over here here's the here's one of the the uh, tapping head arms and as you can see it's tapered from the big end down to the small end so this is what i would use when i would put it in the vise nice soft brass and again i've measured it and i knew and it was just so that i could hold it steady and and the vise was putting uniform pressure against it i did put a plate underneath there basically used some uh, vice um, supports to, um, to to have a flat base underneath matter of fact one of these when I also measured like the initial casting after I'd got done grinding it one of them was significantly shorter on one end so I actually had a 10,000 stainless steel shim that I stuck underneath for the first milling so I, what I would do is mill the bo the bottoms flat and I got them flat, and then I would and take off. I knew how much I was I was needing to take off. I'd take off um, a, a representative amount, about half of, le or a little less than half of what the total that needed to be removed to get it down to an inch and a half tall. 
and then I'd flip it over. I could remove the bottom shim at that point, use the side packing, mill it flat, take off a good amount, and then it, what I would ordinarily do is let's go ahead and take it out and double check the, the heights of both of these to make sure that nothing was amiss. And if, then I'd usually flip it back over again and finish the bottom so it was perfectly parallel to the top. Not that it has to be, but like I've been saying all along, if you're going to do something, might as well take that little bit of extra measure and do it right. You know, I'm a hobbyist. I'm a professional would probably have a much faster way of doing that, but I want this to look nice, and that's the one way I can be sure that it looks nice. So you can see the little center punch marks. I've got this one center punched and ready to go too. And what I'll be using, I'll use my little um, Starrett Wiggler with the center finder in it. Um, in the drill, I'll just pick up the center. It's easy to do. There's tons of videos about that on YouTube. So I'll pick up the center and uh, countersink it. Or I, I may need to mill a flat and countersink and drill through. So that pretty much covers it. Um, next time you see this, hopefully I'll have the, the brass installed, the cotters installed, and um, when then then after that it's just a matter of building a fixture and um, doing the actual boring for the uh, seven eighths and the three quarter inch bores and the heads themselves will be essentially done one other thing let me point this out not a big deal but when i was machining this the, the drawings call for this flat this part of the drill head to be at um, a quarter inch below this level and I just, if I'd have taken it all the way down to the quarter inch, this, this boss would hardly have been visible. So purely for aesthetic reasons, I stopped at an eighth of an inch. So it's 125 thousandths from space down. So I'll just, I'll need to remember that and adjust when I go to build the actual drilling mechanism. Not a big deal, but that's the kind of thing when you're dealing with castings. These are beautiful castings. And they look different from some of the ones that you've seen in the book, but they've machined beautifully, getting great chips. I have my little plastic bag with a magnet in it to catch the chips, and I've been vacuuming up. That's why it looks neat in here, and sweeping up the piles. So uh, trying to work somewhat neatly. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that's interesting to you. I have no idea how long I've talked here, 12 and a half minutes, so... <laughs> I hope these longer videos are, are interesting and entertaining for everybody. And um, thanks for the comments. Keep them coming. I will keep you posted.